So now externally, let's study the structure and then we'll see the function. Ready? Let's see the structure of the breast. Okay. I'll tell you when to pick up the pens. You can drop them down. So externally, there is a projection called nipple. And that is actually, God has planned to give this projection called nipple so that baby can suck on it. Yeah. And that is how a baby develops the sucking reflex. Everything is planned. We just don't know. We don't have the manual. Because when we are born, there is no user, user manual attached to the baby. That is why we are studying this. Yeah. Now, you also see around the nipple, there is a pigmented portion. Okay. Pink to dark brown in color, which is called as the areola. Which is called as the areola. Question, write it down. The pigmented area near the nipple, surrounding the nipple is called areola. This areola, if you look closely, has small, sort of very small, tiny raised projections. Those are areola glands, which are, which secrete the sebum, a little oily secretion. Is that clear? Now coming to internal structure, which is very, very important. Listen to me carefully, drop your pens. Internally, a breast consists of chiefly glandular tissue, that is the function, which are called memory glands. But it also supporting the glands, there are two other tissues, which is the fibrous tissue, which is the fibrous tissue, and the other is the fatty or adipose tissue. Well, they are supporting the memory glands and the ducts. So these are supporting the glands and ducts. So a breast is a component of glandular tissue, fibrous tissue, adipose tissue. More the adipose tissue, bigger the breast is. That's all. Okay, now we are going to be talking about our functional areas which are glands and ducts. This much is clear. I am going very slow because MCQs can come in your NEET exam from this structure. Let's do it together. Now, let's look at the glandular tissue. With me on this, I am marking the glandular tissue. This, is, this yellow is the adipose tissue. Now, glandular tissue consists of, do you see this pink portion? Consists of lobes, lobe, 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 lobe and lobe. Glandular tissue, just keep listening to ma'am. Don't need to write. The glandular tissue is not just present or scattered like a mass. It is present, it is organized. Glandular tissue is organized. I'm just making it easy for you as 15 to 20 in a single breast, 15 to 20 memory lobes. Okay, now do you see each lobe? So this is one lobe, this is one lobe. Each lobe has clusters of grape-like. Do you see these grape-like structures? Grape-like clusters of alveoli. Remember the alveoli of lungs? Remember them. So, these alveoli in the lobules, sorry, lobes, they can be lobules also, yeah, called alveoli. So, these are doing the function. The functional unit is alveoli. That's why I told you to remember the lungs as well. See, you relate and study, you are empowered when you study like this. And, and, and there could be somebody studying alveoli here, alveoli there, forgetting that, forgetting this. Alveoli are going to produce the milk. 
it is the functional unit of the breast of the mammary gland so alveoli will store the milk ejection is a different thing production is a different thing my children alveoli is going to produce the milk but ejection will happen i'll tell you how that is under the control of hormones as well all right this is clear till alveoli now these alveoli whatever milk they they produce okay they will be they will be small mammary tubules coming through them the milk will have to go into tubules in order to travel further the destination is outside the body the nipple the child will suck the nipple and the milk has to come out so the site of formation was alveoli the next station is mammary tubules so many alveoli so many tubules all these tubules do you see that mammary tubules within the lobe all these tubules will join to form mammary ducts mammary ducts keep writing that's why i'm saying it all so slow i care about your writing as much as you do okay so alveoli was the production unit mammary tubule mammary tubules join together to form bigger mammary ducts this is the third station we are showing the entire this is the entire breast region these are the lobe, lobes or the lobules containing the alveoli alveoli will produce the milk the milk will go into the small tubules tubules will join together to form ducts but that's not all mammary ducts will join together to form bigger structures <coughs> called as mammary ampulla very close to the nipple very close to the nipple do you see this wider structure this was the duct these were the branch tubules tubules are even thinner than the duct okay so we are actually everything will converge at the nipple outside the body okay so mammary ampulla is formed when ducts see mammary duct from here mammary duct from here mammary duct will join all mammary ducts of that single breast will join together to form mammary ampulla and mammary ampulla will join together to form lactiferous duct which will open outside in the nipple finally lactiferous duct is the door to outside lactiferous duct at nipple will open at the nipple so i hope you are writing are you writing fine i'll go again for you i love revision so now those of you who missed a point here and there in between ma'am is always with you once again glandular tissue is arranged in glandular tissue is arranged in 15 to 20 lobes mammary lobes mammary lobes have alveoli alveoli open into mammary tubules well they are the site of milk production memory tubules open into memory duct memory ducts open into ampulla ampulla opens into lactiferous duct lactiferous duct opens at the nipple outside mother's milk is considered as very 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 rich source of everything it is the most nutritious food actually it consists of fats it consists of casein milk protein it consists of lactose the good sugar milk sugar it consists of all the major nutrients carbohydrates fats proteins in approx in appropriate quantity it also has antibodies you will be studying in class 12th in the when we speak about the immunology yeah so that is the source of immunity for a newborn when he is exposed to outer environment uh, mother's milk have is very rich in uh, um, antibodies nutrients um, minerals like sodium potassium phosphorus 
it is a little low in iron though yeah so um calcium of course so the, so the child it's a, it's the it's a very rich source of nourishment for the child hmm should be respected and revered now supporting all these ducts like i told you uh, earlier supporting the alveoli and ducts is the fibrous tissue the connective tissue and all this is surrounded between the lobes fat is filled between the lobes the fat is filled 